Check the description for the following discount codes. Today you find me at Veloce headquarters in London alongside Jonathan from Motion Simulation. He's got two exciting products that he wants to share with everyone today. The first of which is going to be in this video, the second of which will be in a follow-up video. Um, Jonathan, for people that don't know, if you could just tell us a little bit about Veloce and your company, Motion Simulation, that'd be great. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, we started the company 2008, 13 years ago. Uh, five years of research and development, uh, developing product. Uh, we firstly developed the TL series, which you'll be having a look at. Yeah. Um, and we've developed a number of other products, including what we call Motion Simulation Room, which where you link multiple simulators together. And then in the la over the last year, we've developed uh, the LC series that you see here today. Yep. Um, with regards to Veloce, we've had a working relationship with Veloce for over three years, nearly four years. Uh, they approached us. Okay. Uh, Veloce uh, are uh, race teams. They're in Extreme E and Formula W, um, doing very well in, in that, a that area. Um, and they're also hugely into esports. They have a lot of drivers, a lot of talent out there. Yes, so, uh, yeah. So the relationship with them started about three, four years ago when uh, the founders of the company were looking for a simulator for driver <coughs> training assessment. Uh, they looked at all the products in the market. They found us with a TL3, Perfect. came to test drive, uh, ended up buying two units. And then the relationship has sort of gone on from there and led to uh, the LC series you see today for yeah. home use. Okay, and of course led to us being here today um, having this conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So let's look at the LC series in this first video. Do you want to just talk us through the features, the specification, and what your goal was when you designed it? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, from a sort of internal design brief, we wanted to incorporate a number of the features that were, uh, are used in the TL series. Okay, yeah. The TL series is a commercial professional product. Yes. We wanted to incorporate a number of those items into this. So the whole steering assembly here is straight from the TL3. Ergonomics uh, is extremely important for us to have a product that can accommodate people from under five foot to sort of six foot eight, something like that. Um, a huge amount of flexibility, so the ability to adjust uh, driving positions as mm -hmm. well. So the, we developed the world's first variable driving position cockpit with a TL3, and we've incorporated that technology and design into this. So this product can uh, at the, uh, very quickly can adjust from uh, saloon car, sports, GT, and formula driving positions. Uh, hopefully you'll have a look at a bit later. Yes, yeah, I will. Um, also, the steering adjustment is super quick and rigid, locks in place, and then pedal adjustment as well. Once again, super quick and, and uh, easy to, to do. Easy to do. And the only thing that stays in the stack position relative to everything else is the seat, isn't it? The, That's right. Yeah, yeah everything seat, else moves around it. Yeah, a bit like, I suppose, a Ferrari Enzo, I think, or one of those, for FFX or whatever it was. Yeah, um, yeah we, uh, based on our principles of uh, ergonomic work, uh, we didn't feel you need to actually no, move the seat. No. You, move, you have a steering mechanism and pedal mechanism that, that moves around the driver. And yeah. with this uh, design, what happens is when you push the uh, buttons here on this Pro version, uh, the, as you drop the height of the steering, the steering wheel actually gets closer to the driver. So a shorter person, it's automatically closer. Taller person, it's automatically further away. And that's through measuring 50 different people, their limb measurements, <laughs> you know, six months of work. That would have been a fun job. Can it, I just it, get you in a leg, please? It was. <laughs> yeah, tape measures. It was a huge amount of work. Yeah. But we think... Um, You've got it right. So we, it, I think we've got yeah, it right. And yeah. with, the, with the TL3, we've done over 50,000 test drives now. You know, so many people through it and all of that has to be adjusted and fixed in place so that's what's been applied to this. Yeah and it obviously all the feedback from those people was all good and it works well and everyone's I mean I, I have sat in this already and I can tell you when we do adjust things everything does feel like it's exactly in the right place and it is very easy to adjust which I will demonstrate on camera a little bit later so everything you've set out to achieve it certainly looks like you have, and I was also saying to Jonathan how the aesthetic of this over an aluminium profile rig is much more wife friendly <laughs> because we all know our partners don't necessarily like having huge lengths of aluminium stuck in the bedroom or the front room or the spare room or wherever it might be. Yes. And this does look, this does look lovely. I do, I love the shape of it. 
Yeah, thank you. And the overall aesthetic. Oh, the other thing, um, in talking about adjustability, uh, that Jonathan hasn't mentioned yet, is that the monitor height is also adjustable, and there's a triple monitor That's option right. as well. Yeah, so we, we're, this is a prototype. The whole product here is sort of final stages of prototype. We're yep. right into just border of production. We're in uh, late, uh, early October now. Uh, first October today, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're right on the precipice of, of full launch. This is the sort of final stages of, of, uh, of prototype manufacture. The steering, uh, steering frame uh, has, as you say, an adjustment to slide up and down. So it's critical, we believe, that for a maximum immersion, the driver can get in, quickly adjust their seating position mm -hmm. and get their viewing angle correct. And to do that, we can slide the TV up and down or yep. triple mount TV up and down. Yeah, and this is great because when you flick from you know, a GT position to a formula position, your head obviously drops dramatically and you need to bring the screen down with it to keep that That's exactly right. I that mean, when viewpoint. We, There's no point sitting, you know, in a formula position, but the screen is up. <laughs> it's yeah, up there, is it? Exactly. When we, when we look at... It's uh, great. What, all great ideas. Th thank you. Thank you. Um, when we look at what uh, established players in the market are, are doing, specifically with extruded aluminium, is that, you know, you have a product there that uh, requires a lot of, uh, well, to build one takes several hours. Mm -hmm. This is under two hours. Um, and then adjustment is very fiddly. Yes. Uh, requires spanners and tools. Spanners, you Allen keys, yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't normally get told about that. Uh, often pedals can take 10 minutes to move, something like that, five, 10 minutes maybe. Um, this is just moved within seconds. It is, yeah. So it's really about a sort of full professional commercial level product appealing to a broad audience uh, with quick adjustability. And, and I think, you know, critically, if you have friends over um, and you want to get in and out, you can quickly do that without any hassle. Yeah. yeah, I do this a lot because I regularly race with friends. In fact, when I get back tonight, I've got a friend coming over. Um, Same height or? He's actually about three inches taller than me. Okay. So this is why I mentioned to you earlier about fitting mm. pedal tray sliders on yes. my own rig. Yes. The reason I've done this is because the chap mm. coming over tonight yeah. um, was around the other day. Yeah. We swapped steering wheels, we adjusted the seating position and his yeah. knees were like up under the, the wheelbase. Yeah. And he's like, Carl, can you not put the pedals on sliders? And I went, I, yes, yes I can. It's great you've so thought of that. I bought some sliders yeah. and, and I did, I did. Yeah. So when he comes around tonight, we can get yeah. him, he can put the, uh, the pedals where he wants them, yeah. you know, and the seat in our case, because my wheel deck, of course, doesn't move. Being an aluminium profile rig, I don't have the luxury of pressing two buttons and just going down or up mm. like we can with this. And I'll zoom in on all this in a little while and show you all in greater detail. So yes, all this functionality yeah. is absolutely brilliant. And also I must say that the seat is bespoke as well and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, it's one of the things I said to Jonathan was the angle of the back is just perfect for me. It's kind of personal obviously, but it's just perfect for me. So this is a really nice seat. Oh, what were you telling me about being able to? Well, yeah, we Potentially. Did, yeah, we, I mean, we, we did a lot of work on this seat. This started with the TL3, there's a lot of ergonomic work in that. Uh, we've then done, I don't know, about six months' work with everything else uh, in enhancing that, different sizes of people. Yeah. But yeah, that's a very ergonomically designed seat. Uh, it's actually trimmed by a company that um, uh, do all the trim, uh, Aston Martin and Bentley. Oh. That sort of standard in the UK. Everything's designed and manufactured in the UK, so we think that the quality is pretty good. It's always nice to have things designed and manufactured uh, in the UK. I think so. You know, when these days a lot of stuff is mostly produced you know, across the other side of the world. It's, it's, it's just nice. I, 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 personally, I think it's really important for engineering in the UK yeah. that we retain that knowledge and expertise. Historically, the UK was, years ago, was always at the fore of engine, so it's great to have yeah. that sort of thing still happening yeah, exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. Well, hence the little badge we've put on the back there too. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> the Union Jack on the, yeah. on the back. That's a nice little plaque. Oh, that's yeah. a nice little touch. Yeah. I like that. So Us proud Brits. One of the new features, Carl, that um, we, we, we haven't uh, highlighted to, to anyone yet is that we, um, we have these little handles on the side. Yep. So most adjustability is done with little handles. There's no tools required here, yep. including all of the functionality we've talked about. So you undo those handles. The seat can then lift out and it, it can then be used. We have a, we'll be supplying an office chair base. 
So that will slide into a base that goes on top of the office chair. So this can be used as an office chair. So the whole purpose is that you can quickly fold the system down, move it out of the way, and you have dual purpose on the seat itself. See, that's a brilliant idea. I love Thank that. Thanks. I love that idea. And, and what we're going to be doing, you see on these um, contact points here, I'm sure you can zoom in on that a yep. little bit later. Um, the, this is for all of the accessory mounts. Okay, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's different fixture points, and that will be applied up for the office chair as well. So if we have accessories going onto here, those modular upgrades will be, you'll be able to put them onto the office chair as well. <laughs> That's excellent. You, it sounds like you've thought about a lot of, well, a lot of different functionality and options for people. Flexibility is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I think, I think that's really the key. When you look at uh, certain products that we've referred to, the, the downsides you never seem to hear is the assembly time, uh, the uh, time to adjust, yes. and, uh, and therefore who can use these uh, quickly and simply. And yeah. our focus really is about quality and functionality. And because it's a four in one, uh, four, four, we call it four simulators in one, it has a huge scope of use as well, uh, yeah. which we think is a long-term thing. Yeah, well, I, it, it definitely does. Um, Jonathan mentioned briefly about being able to remove this and putting it on an office chair base and then moving the cockpit out of the way. There are casters yeah. available. Yeah, um, we can have a look at that, that we, a bit, yeah. That we can put on. Mm. So, you know, you can literally, because my old GT Amiga Art cockpit that I used to run, that had, casters because I would use it in my front room mm. so I'd wheel it out in the middle of the room to play on the TV yeah. and then I'd wheel it away when I'm done so there's the casters there quite yeah. funky oh, they, they are quite funky yeah. it's just, we'll, we'll actually come in and have a little <laughs> have a little zoom in on that if we can they are quite funky it's a very modern looking yeah. caster they're yeah. pretty damn solid oh, they, take, they feel yeah. hefty yeah yeah and they can take somebody sat in it so uh, that yeah works so well. you'll be able to push yourself around the room we have done that in, in, in the warehouse <laughs> of course yeah. yeah yeah first thing you end up doing is yeah, is trying them out okay so i think have we covered oh did you want to speak about um the three different versions available and the price points yeah. of course because that's yeah. what people are going to want to so the, no, how much did it cost, Carl? Yeah, it looks great. How much the main it? price point we wanted to get to was under a thousand pounds for the base cockpit yep. without the seat. Okay. So yeah, that's all seat. the functionality we've talked about. Um, that includes a standard um, steering frame like this one here. Okay, so this would go. That would replace the what instrument binnacle there. Yep. And this can take pretty much any uh, force feedback system. Yes. Very yeah. solid. It looks. You can see it's pretty chunky. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah um, it it's hefty. And so that would be supplied with that, and that has the ability to move backwards and forwards, as well as okay. steering adjustment. So would that fit in here, then, where these thumb screws Correct. are? Correct. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. That would be supplied. To give you your adjustment there. Yep. Exactly. That would be supplied as that. So it's 995 without the seat, uh, just above £1,300 with the seat. Okay, yep. Um, and then this unit here with uh, what we call pro-rigid lock. So there is two different types of what we call rigid lock. Yep. There's this one here, which is more of a manual process okay. where you turn this. This um, is our height adjustment that's for the wheelbase. Yeah. Yep. So you'd have to get it out of the cockpit to use this. Yes. Um, turn these, very simple, just takes a little bit longer. Yeah, it's just a um, thumb screw, yeah. That goes in there. That's what you get on the standard version. Yep. So your price level, just to confirm, is 995, excluding the seat, just above 1,300 pounds with, with the seat. The seat. And then the pro version is 16, I think it's 1695. And this is the pro version, what we see here. 1695, um, but then it doesn't include the controls. The, anc yeah, the ancillary, yeah. so yes, yeah. you would use your own yeah. screen, pedals, yeah. wheelbase shifter, whatever it might be. Yeah. And the, the other variant that we have on our website, we call it the Pro TK, meaning turnkey. Yes. So that will then include PC, steering system, monitors, Pedals, et cetera. The whole lot. The whole thing. Plug so, and play. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's very, very, very much based on our experience with running a TL3. Customers want full turnkey solutions. Yeah, yeah. So we will be offering that, but we haven't finalized pricing on that okay. yet. Okay, no problem at all. And as far as wheelbase compatibility goes on the pro on the pro yeah you, yeah because obviously the other one could yeah. take you could put a logitech on there if, exactly. you, if you really wanted to yeah as from the pro version which comes with this binnacle yeah that's been what designed that around all of the sim cube 2 okay notices. we've been running those on the tl3 for some time we think they're an uh, absolutely incredible product yeah great especially wheelbase. with the wireless uh, steering wheel <sighs> 
One of my pet hates is a huge cable hanging down by well, your knees. So our experience from 50,000 test drives running simulator rooms yep. is that that curly cable gets entwined. Yes. Uh, the USB breaks. Yep. And the sim stops working. Yep. So I've experienced it. Race, you know? Experienced it myself. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. Just like, why is it there? Yeah. We're in 2021. You don't need a bungee cord yeah. hanging down from your steering wheel. Exactly. So with this, <laughs> with this up here, with Martin Asher's uh, yeah, amazing product really there, it's so robust. We're yes. really happy with it. Yeah, it is. Um, I haven't had a drive yet. I have sat in it, so yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to yeah. having a go in a minute. But have we covered everything we need to cover before yeah. I get in and? Yeah, you'll be and going drive, through and the main functionality. Yes, I, I will. I'll bring the there. camera a bit closer so I can demonstrate the adjustability. Yeah. But I think, is there anything else I think that's you it. want to add or demonstrate? We've covered price, we've covered... I mean, we're going we're gonna to have motion on here as well. Oh, you are? So basically... As an option. As obviously. an option, yeah. yeah. So that'll be <laughs> a modular upgrade. We're going through okay. that now. We've been... You know, we've been doing motion systems, hence why we call motion, motion simulation. simulation. Yeah, yes. uh, for uh, well, eight eight years, I, I guess. Yep. Uh, five years of R and D before that. So we have a lot of knowledge on that side of things. So we've already designed. There's already a video out there. Yep. Which we can link to your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it will be called LC3 for three axes of motion. Okay. We're yep. looking at two axes as well. Uh, and it will be a modular bolt-on upgrade okay. that people can choose to have. Will that be like corner actuators? Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's where we are. Uh, haven't finalised pricing on that yet, no. but it will be the critical thing from a customer's perspective. They'll be able to buy a rig and an upgrade. Yeah, it's coming. Exactly. So yeah, what, yeah, yes, what you see here isn't all you can do. Yeah. There will be a lot more you can add on yeah. should you want to. So uh, yeah, so just, just to wrap up, um, the way we've deliberately designed this is for functionality, usability, modular upgrade uh, potential. Um, yes. So it's, it's really the overall flexibility and functionality functionality of the product is where we see the value in it. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely it's, it's evident. It's clear. You know, having had a little play with all the adjustments already, Jonathan's definitely achieved what he set out to achieve. So what I'll do now, I'll grab that camera, I'll bring it a bit closer and I'll show you all the various adjustments that we can make, and then I'll get in and have a little test drive. What I'm gonna do is just illustrate, illustrate, I'm not gonna illustrate, I'm gonna demonstrate how this moves from this angle here, so you can kind of see the whole cockpit, and then I'll do a close up walk around as well, so I can sort of really show things. But I mean, I, I did briefly show earlier in the video uh, that this moves up and down, but it is super, super simple. There is two buttons here, and they look like the sort of buttons you would find in a racing cockpit. And you simply push them in with your thumbs, and you can raise it up. And this is all on uh, either hydraulic or pneumatic ram, so it's really, really smooth. And it goes super low. So the sort of things you can do here is like a father-son scenario, you know, where, where you're, you're trying to race with your lad, but he can't reach the pedals and he can't get the steering wheels like up in the air. So this is just perfect. It literally just goes up and down like that and it's really, really smooth. So that's how you adjust this. Also these thumb screws there, if you wanted to, you can move it in and out a little bit as well. But like Jonathan explained, it's on an arc that they've calculated intentionally so that as you move it up and down, it adjusts in and out. I mean, as it will do on an arc. So it should be in the right position anyway. So that's how you adjust that. I'll hop out and I'll come down here to adjust from the three different driving positions. There is just one pin down here and you just lightly pull it out and you can then either move the cockpit typically. Now it's not going to come out. Oh, it was catching against the monitor leg. My fault. So yes, you pull this out like that, and then this moves really smooth and really freely to your different driving positions, and you just let go of it, and it will slot back into place like that. So there's one, and if we go this way, there's your formula position. I'll just hop in and obviously show you what that looks like. So now I'm much lower, and the pedals are obviously in that formula position relative to the bum of my seat, the bum of my seat, the seat of my bum, the, my bum in the seat, but it's relative to that. Uh, and again, you can still obviously adjust this 
if you need to as well to get that exactly where you want. And then again, just to, to put it back, we pull it out, we slide that down, it locks to where it wants to lock. Uh, and then there's that position as well. There, so there's your different positions. Um, the monitor itself is basically on a, on a set of seat sliders. Um, the triple version will be supported itself so that you won't have to take the weight of three screens as you adjust it. But it's really simple to do. Again, you just support the weight, you operate the seat slider and it can go down and up. So you can put it wherever you need it to be based on your seating position and the sim that you're in. Now the pedals are also super simple. Am I still in shot? I am. You literally, these have got like, like teeth underneath and they slot into teeth. So you lift it up out of the teeth and then you can move it forwards and backwards. And I think Jonathan said the teeth are set an inch apart, I believe. So that's your incremental sort of spacing and you can put them obviously exactly where you want it to be. So that's how everything adjusts on the fly. And I must say, it's a very quick, easy way to adjust everything. Like, oh, and there's a, there's a keyboard tray under there as well. So if you use this, like a little keyboard like this with an integrated trackpad, you've got everything you need and that's out of the way as well. So I do really like the functionality and adjustability here. It is all very good. Um, I'll get the camera now and just give you a little close up walk around of this and then I'll jump in and do a quick test drive and we will check for the usual things that we do when we're reviewing cockpits which is flex and wobble uh, and of course for the steering wheel base and for the pedal tray as well. We've got no shifter uh, mounts at the moment so that's not something I can test right now but yeah let me grab the camera do a little close up walk around. As I said earlier in the video this seat is super comfortable. Oh, there's a little plaque um, we were talking about earlier as well. It's just a nice little touch there. But yeah, the seat itself is super comfortable and feels great. Really nice quality. The, um, the binnacle on this pro version, I also think looks particularly nice. And it takes its styling from its bigger brother, the TL3, that we'll look at in the second video. You can see the, the red buttons to the left and to the right of the steering wheel there. That's what we use to adjust the height. And then down the side here, just that black knob in front of us there is what we pull out to then allow the whole cockpit to change seating positions or, yeah, driving positions really. Um, cycle through those, really easy to do as you saw there. And then this is the pedal tray. Uh, there is another thicker pedal tray available as well, uh, Jonathan said. I, I can't obviously show you how this adjusts like this, but as you saw a minute ago, you just pick it up and you move it to where you want it and you put it back down again. But, you know, this sort of tubular construction is definitely much more aesthetically pleasing than your typical aluminium profile cockpit. At least I think so. Although some people do like the sort of industrial look of an Ali Profile cockpit. But I think for the sort of price we're talking here, from a thousand pounds up to about 16, I think he said, for the adjustability and functionality, and the way it looks, I think it looks pretty sweet. Let's just have a little look from the front. Make sure I don't trip over anything whilst I'm walking backwards. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a nice looking cockpit. Obviously this is very much personal taste, but, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to hop in the seat and take it for a test drive. I'll sort of position the camera here somewhere and you'll be able to see flex and wobble uh, and what have you as I, as I give it a little, a little test drive. So one of the things I noticed when looking over this cockpit is that there is a small amount of sort of flex um, and movement, you know, in this wheelbase here. You, you'll probably see a little bit there as I do it on camera. Now, obviously compared to aluminium profile, there is more than what you would have on one of those cockpits. But it, the trade-off is because of all this adjustability and flexibility that we have, being able to change driving positions on the fly without having to use Allen keys, 
you know, and, uh, and spanners. So you, whenever something can move sort of relatively freely, there has to be some play, you know, some lash, otherwise things wouldn't work. So it is, it is what it is. It's, I wouldn't say, it's not bad, put it that way. Um, you know, you're getting a lot of functionality for a small trade-off in play. Now, Jonathan has got the force feedback up, in my opinion, ridiculously heavy on this setup here. So as I'm going round corners, the cockpit really is being put through its paces here because it, that motor is really putting out some torque, <laughs> like way more than I would ever, than I would ever use. Um, but I can't, I can't say I feel, I can't feel or visibly see any, I mean, I can't see, but I'm looking at the track. I can't feel any issue with, with flex whilst I'm driving. At least, you know, these are my initial impressions. So I wouldn't say that's an issue, especially not for the, the functionality you get and adjustability. One of the things I don't like is the pedal tray. The way it adjusts is very easy to adjust, but because of that, there is a fair amount of movement in it. Now, when your feet are on the sort of the heel plate and you're applying pressure, it doesn't matter. It doesn't move at all. But I'm just going to sort of pull over to demonstrate this. But you can slide it. It will slide backwards and forwards like this. And obviously there's some side to side play there as well. But once your feet are on it, the side to side might be evident if you're going from clutch to accelerator, there is a little bit of movement there. You, I don't know whether you'll see it or not. Um, in fact, I might put the camera down beside the pedal tray to show you that uh, in a minute. In fact, I'll get a clip of that afterwards and I'll put it in as I'm speaking now. But yeah, so there is side to side movement. Um, so should you be someone that's H pattern shifting, perhaps in a rally game, going from the brake to the accelerator, there is, there is a little bit of play here. It's not much when you're actually, you know, using it, as you can see in the clip I'm showing you, but it is there. Uh, and it's just a little thing that I thought could easily be changed with perhaps a little lockable thumb screw or 90 degree handle. You just turn and cinches it down in place. Um, Jonathan did say, it's had 50,000 test drives and I'm the only person to mention it. So I don't know what that says about me, but, um, but yeah, it's just something I didn't particularly like. But again, trade off for having such an easily adjustable pedal position. Um, but you know, aside from a little bit of flex up and down here, a tiny bit of side to side, um, I don't really see any negatives and I see a whole bunch of positives here, which is the ability to just, I mean, just adjusting this up and down like that, and there's such a huge range of adjustment, is really, really good. You know, and again, changing the different driving positions, just by pulling this out, and making sure you don't put the leg of your monitor stand in the way, you know, is, is great. And then the monitor stand itself, up and down, no issues with that whatsoever. The seat is super comfortable. So, you know, you can have casters. The, the idea is to be able to remove the seat and put it on an office chair base and use it as an office chair is a great idea as well. Sort of almost home integration when it comes to your racing rig, you know, and then put this right down, slide it out the way in whatever room you might be in. So I think overall, the cockpit gets a thumbs up from me. The small amount of flex we have is a worthy trade-off if you want all this adjustability. Obviously, if you don't need the adjustability and you don't want to change from GT to F1, you know, you don't need to change from someone who's six foot five driving to someone that's maybe only five foot, then there are other options available that are more rigid and maybe that's more important to you. But that's going to be down to personal needs and personal taste as well. But other than that, you know, I think it's a great um, piece of equipment that they've come up with here. And I don't think it's priced badly at all for the functionality and flexibility that you have available to you. And of course, forthcoming upgrades potentially with motion actuators and whatnot. 
Um, there's no, there was no real movement in the seat that I noticed, you know, when, when driving, and I've had another extended drive off camera as well. Um, you know, everything, everything's, everything's pretty spot on, to be honest. And obviously, the aesthetic, the way it looks, will also be personal taste. But yeah, from a reviewer's point of view, it's a good cockpit. And if you want flexibility and adjustability and all those other little options that, that Jonathan and the team have thought about, it's a good cockpit. If this little bit of flex in the wheelbase, or well, the upright's really here, and the little bit of play in the pedals is too much for you, then obviously there's other options out there on the market. But yes, that's my conclusion. Overall, a great offering. And keep your eyes open for my next video, where we look at the big, big brother, the TL3, which is aimed at the commercial market uh, and carries a price tag, I believe, of about 50,000 pounds plus VAT. Again, this is commercial market, so not really for home use. This is where this one, the LC series, comes into play. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.